Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and in this video we're breaking down Joker 2. Hey Fleck, you got a joke for us today? The new trailer has just dropped and in this video we're going to be going through it all. After releasing at CinemaCon it's given us our first full look at the film and we'll be talking everything in it and what we know about the movie. Now when we last left Arthur Fleck he was in a psychiatric ward for killing Murray Franklin on TV. Beyond that though he'd also confessed to killing some notable businessmen on the subway along with his ex-co-worker Randall. I'm guessing that his mother's smothering could be tied to him too unless he's locked up for the for the foreseeable future, well until the revolving door policy at Arkham lets him escape. Now, there's also the death of the Waynes which happened at the height of Thomas's mayoral campaign and Gotham's gonna get worse before it gets better. That takes us into this movie in which Joker is going to be starting a romance with Harley Quinn. Several shots of them behind the scenes have dropped along with a post last week that showed the pair dancing. This is on a green background, aping the original green poster that we got for that first film. This instantly let you know that Tony the movie would be akin to the first one and primarily it'll centre around the pair. Originally Harley or Harleen Quinzel was a psychiatrist, however it seems like she's another inmate here and she's going to be sharing Arthur's madness. This is going down at Arkham Asylum which is of course the infamous asylum from the Batman universe. This appeared in the first film as well with it being a place that Arthur's mother Penny was sent to. This was in the wake of her obsession with Thomas Wayne which may or may not have been a thing. In this world I think it was and personally believe that Arthur is Thomas's son. That's purely due to the photo he found signed by a TW but there's also lots of clues we talked about in our big joker breakdown. I'll link that at the end, bit of spam for you. But either way, the idea of Penny being locked up in Arkham, desperate for love, is of course something that we're going to see reflected in her son. I haven't done anything with my life like you have. Now Lady Gaga is playing an alternate version of the character which means it won't clash with the DCU and whatever they do there. Margot Robbie hasn't confirmed if she's returning but it's going to be similar to how Phoenix played Joker while Jared Leto was also doing it. I know most of you know that, yeah, but I just got to make sure that people who don't obsess over every single movie in the detail are filled in as well. Some some confusion over this multiverse stuff, so I just thought I'd clear it up. Harleen said to have formed a deadly romantic relationship, but we're also going to get the return of Zazie Beetz. Reprising her role as Sophie, it'll be interesting to see how they intertwine that relationship here, as it was about as real as your girlfriend's was. You know the one, the one who writes nudes in bio under every single tweet. You know the girl, your girlfriend. I think we're going to watch the classic Harley and Joker story play out on screen where the pair fall for each other while they cause fallout in Gotham. The title Folia de refers to two people in close association who share the same delusion or mental state. Joker in the first film used to fantasize and make things up which I think will be shared with Harleen. Anyway they're going to be joined by Brendan Gleeson and Catherine Keener, Steve Coogan will be popping up along with Harry Lordy and Ken Lung. Lastly, Lee Gill, who played Gary, will return, along with Sharon Washington, who will once more play his social worker. Now we begin the trailer with Arthur in his cell, which then pulls out to reveal the cell door. Might be a reach, but I thought that visually, this was really similar to the way that figures were presented on TV in that first film. Arthur is of course an unreliable narrator, and this presentation almost painted out like his life is entertainment for us to go and watch. Beyond that though, we have the symbolism of him being stuck in a box and unable to get out. We know that he does seem to get out though as there's a newspaper at one point that says free on all charges. This is why he gets to go out into the world later on but I also feel that it might be a fantasy. We know that what Arthur sees can't really be trusted so it's difficult to determine whether he's imagining it or not. He may still be stuck in his cell and when you're seeing Arkham Asylum imagined as a prestigious hotel roof then you can obviously see how things might be warped. Now in the background we can hear other inmates laughing and a guard asks if he has a joke today. I feel like this is him being taunted but he's unable to smile which is then rectified at the end with a shot of the lipstick on the glass. A lipstick and kissing happens heavily throughout the teaser with there being lots of love between the pair. Over the top of this we get the theme hammered home further by the fact we can hear the song What the World Needs Now. That's sweet sweet love, symbolising how it not only saves Arthur but also the world. I guess. I think we're going to see the tearing down of Gotham though which will be a sort of reforming from the ashes of something that eventually ushers in Batman which helps to improve it. The comics have it so the city is always terrible but I've always preferred the takes where it eventually improves like what happens in the Dark Knight Rises or the aftermath of No Man's Land. Arthur has been absent of love and due to his mother's abuse and fake relationships with Sophie he's never really felt it. 
Now this changes when Arthur is escorted through the halls by the guards and his eyes meet Harley Quinn's. I'm also guessing that he's a higher ranking prisoner due to his attacks as we can see that he's surrounded by lots of different guards. In opposite to this we see that Harley's able to stand off with the other inmates, mostly unsupervised. There's not really any guards for all those people there, whereas Arthur has a lot watching over him. It shows a danger that he could provide, but he's further detached from everybody else. Now this is further enforced by the next shot, in which we see him in another cell, sparking up a cigarette. Due to the way the silhouette is framed, he once more appears in a box. The voiceover says we use music to make us whole, which creates the framing of the pair, perhaps using musical therapy to cure them. That might be a reach, but I think the pair might have something like that, and it could also explain why Harley was singing from a sheet before. I think that was just a communal thing, but they may have singing as a way for the inmates to feel normal. The idea of music is really important too, as we know the film's going to be a sort of quasi-musical where there being several musical sections in the movie. Test screening details have said, the musical aspect is not presented in a conventional way. They sing of course, but it works in a different pattern. Very risky, but genius. Now Lady Gaga is obviously an incredible singer, and Variety reported in March that the movie will be mostly a jukebox musical. They said there'll be 15 well-known songs, including That's Entertainment. Variety also reported that the scenes will be raw musical pieces like how they were in A Star Is Born, instead of being highly choreographed dance sequences. I'm sure we will still get them, but that's what they said on the whole. Now Gaga was also filmed singing a couple of swells from the Easter Parade. Originally sung by Fred Astaire and Judy Garland that had a homeless couple donning the cast out clothes of rich people and singing about how they were a couple of swells. So you can see how that fits the pair, but this to me is going to be the biggest risk of the movie and every time there's been a report about it, the comments have been about how it's going to suck. I'm actually intrigued to see where they go with it and it's going to be another interesting thing, at least in a time when comic book movies are starting to feel a little samey. You might remember that around the time of the first film, there were fears that Joker would inspire some shootings, and I hope that this time we get reports how it's going to inspire some flash mobs. Hey, the jokes are back. Great jokes like that. Hang around at the channel. Now, if you love comic books and want to support the channel, then definitely check out our new merch store below the video. We've got an X-Men 97 inspired t-shirt that comes with glowing purple claws from when the raging Cajun charged up your boy weapon X's. There's also, it's all connected ones. Me and the boys. Theory time and lots more, so definitely head below to check out some of the merch. Thanks. Now I think that shot in the darkness is probably a slight misdirect and that Arthur's then taken outside right after seeing Harley. His life's been cold and dark up until this point, but seeing her makes him start to visualise bright colours. These are represented in the umbrellas, but if we go to the shot before that, we can see their dark, showing how Harley's triggered his fantasies to begin. Now from this point we cut to Harley on the outside, walking up the stairs from the first movie. These were the ones that Arthur walked about several points in the film as part of his repetitive life. She's clearly going through a lot of the things that he did and they're deliberately showing her in similar situations to help to enforce that. This includes the image of her putting her fingers to her head which is also something that Arthur did in the first film. This was shown to him originally by Sophie but there the love was unrequited. Yeah though it seems like Ollie's into him and the repetition of the stairs thing shows that. I do wonder how Harley would know about this though, and thus it may just be a fantasy. However, it could also be because she has detailed notes on his psyche, which we'll talk more about later on in the video. Now we know from behind the scenes clips that we're going to get a sort of repeat of the stairs, which will then lead into a big dancing scene. Joined by Harley, this time it shows how the pair really complete each other and has a lot of symbolism to it. Joker going down these stairs in the first film, to me, that showed the descent into madness, but it summed up how he was more than happy to do it. At the top of the stairs we have the authority figures and the police, representing the sanity and restrictions he was about to leave behind. Descending down these steps transformed him, and it seems like it's going to transform her as well. Now we know from the behind the scenes footage, a bit more about what goes on in these moments. Police then show up and force him to the ground, and it's at this point that the character sent handcuffed. I don't think that Harleen is, so it's likely that she hasn't committed any crimes yet. Huge shoutouts to Hollywood Fix and Hollywood Pipeline for all the footage, and they've got a couple of extra shots on both their channels, so if you want to see those scenes, then definitely go check them out. It also shows they have a shared illusion together tying back to that title folie de. Shoutouts to Ryan Airy for pointing out that he thinks this shot of her walking up the stairs could also be a flashback, and that we'll see her origin story told this way. Later on we see Holly smashing a shop window like the like button, and there's TVs in the back that have Joker's face on it. I think this may be part of the riot from the end of the first film, and it could explain why she was locked up. 
Now, I have a few time that Harley might actually be the doctor that we know from the comics. However, due to Joker's delusion, he's seeing her as an inmate like him. This could be why she's allowed out in the corridors by herself, and it may also explain why there weren't any doctors in the singing room. There she was holding the paper like how she is here, and she could have been leading that session instead of being part of it. Later on, she blows smoke through the bars into his mouth, and I doubt she'd be able to just approach other inmates like this unsupervised. That final shot makes me think that she's not in there, as we catch her on the other side of the glass. If she was a doctor, then she'd be on the other side, and yeah, that's the way I take things in this moment. Either way, the pair clearly think they're part of a big musical, as they imagine themselves dancing on a roof. This then cuts to them really dancing in the street in what I believe is Arkham set ablaze. I think it's smart to change her to an inmate as well, and the pair can work together to escape. Together they're stronger, and it helps show why they've become such good teammates. Intercut with this are images of Joker running through the streets, being chased by what appears to be himself. Another clown appears as well, but I feel like the figure dressed like him is part of his imagination. This could be a manifestation of Joker trying to pull off the back, which may be represented in the clothing. We have Arthur in a grey suit with smudged makeup, possibly trying to lead a normal life. How about this figure haunts him and is constantly trying to pull him back? Now you can also catch the garbage bags lining the street as well, showing that the strike from the first film is still in full effect. We also have a shot of Arthur under the spotlight, building off not only the poster, but also his stand-up routine. There he wanted to be a comedian, whereas here I think he wants to become a singer. Here he's wearing his makeup though, showing that's who he really is. He's confident instead of the bumbling idiot he was in the stand-up, showing how he's embraced his persona. Harley saying let's get out of here could also be the start of their escape, and they could imagine it as a musical dance number while the asylum burns around them. The pair dancing of course pulls heavily from the comics, with one of the most famous pieces of them being by Alex Ross. We then get an echo of the Murray Franklin show and see it recreated, however now it's their show instead. I'm guessing this is just one big delusion, and Joker of course imagined himself on there before actually going to it. Potentially, I think this could be Harley imagining having a show with the person that she idolises, and I think we'll see a lot of the movie from her perspective too. This delusion is then shared in the next moment, where we see Joker as a jazz singer while Harley's a dancer. There's several moments like this with large stages, and the fantasy looks are appealing and vibrant. However, Arthur's then pulled through an alleyway by guards breaking him from it. He's screaming as he's being dragged, showing that it's literally tearing him away from what's making him happy. Now from here we cut to the court in what I believe is Joker's trial. There's several signs that say free Joker, and the mob's clearly desperate to have their hero released. Harley appears in a costume similar to her one from the comics, and she's also the one who helps to empower Joker. The next scene has her applying his makeup, showing how she gives him power like he's given her. Now I have a few time about how Harley originally gets her makeup like that. I feel like Joker might kiss her and then this could smudge it off his face onto hers, which is how she initially gets it. I do think she will slowly mimic him more and more, and also start to represent the city as a whole. In the past, right, and I'm going to slag stuff off, but in the past, I've always saw it, right, it was a bit weird how Harleen kind of got swept up with the Joker. She's a top of the class psychiatrist, but she just kind of fell in love with him. I've always enjoyed the character and even have a tattoo of the Paul Dini design, but just how easily she fell was something I relegated to her initially being in a cartoon and thus they had to do shorthand. Here though, we saw how much Joker created a mob around him last time and it was a large part of the city. Those people are still out there and it makes sense that someone who was either part of that mob or fascinated by it might become swept up in this. If she is indeed an inmate, but I still think she's a doctor, then it is obvious that she could become swept up in this too. The allure of a dangerous celebrity can often attract people, and even guys like Charles Manson, they had more girlfriends than you do, mate. They had more, He was pulling this, yeah, and you, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> I also think that, like Joker, she's gonna put her own makeup on to form her character, as we do get a shot of her doing this. It echoes Arthur doing it in the first film, and again, is building off the back of what he did there. Now right after this, we have a scene of Joker clearly being freed, and doing the kicking thing he did on the stairs. This is alongside Harley, however, it's clearly a fantasy, and you can tell by the way everything looks that this is just all staged. This could include him being freed, with it actually being that he's been found guilty. This could then force the pair to escape the asylum, but in his head, he imagines he's being freed. Ryan pointed out the knock knock sign there, and this could be setting up a joke with the punchline being that they aren't really free. Shut the f up, Ryan Airy! The Joker's trial's gonna be a big thing, I think, as we do see him being escorted in a van. 
Later on in the teaser, we see an explosion at what appears to be the courthouse, and thus it could be the pair escaping. We go back and forth between the fantasy and also see the continuation of that jazz scene with it clearly being the pair in the courtroom. However, we also have Holly and Joker's wedding, which we see imagined on a massive stage. You might also notice that Gary's there as well to bless the symbol of their love. I think him standing there also shows that he's Joker's best man, and he of course spared him in that first film. Joker said Gary had always been nice to him, and thus he let him live, so he may see him as a friend, and thus bring him into the fantasy. I'd love it if we just cut to reality, and it was just him tied up. It's a bit sick that word I say, I loved it. I don't mean I lo I'd love that, you know what I mean? I'd be horrified for the guy, but it would kind of show what's really going on in reality, and the torment that Gary's going through. Then we cut to this idyllic wedding scene where it's all part of the fantasy and yeah, it would be just such a cool way to handle it. Lastly, we close out with Holly drawing Joker's smile, which is symbolic of their entire relationship. She puts it on the glass and then Joker moves into it, showing how she's the one who's enabling him to return into that life. She's set it up and he just needs to go into it and embrace being the Joker again. That's what this final shot shows for me and it sums up how the pair are working together to allow the Joker to be freed. There's so much symbolism with it and it's such an amazing moment that really cements the pair as being the perfect couple. Even just the way it's blocked is incredible and yeah, what an amazing moment that I'm still trying to figure out exactly how they lined this up. This basically sums up everything that's going on in the film and how Harley will draw the smile that he then takes on. It's all based in makeup as well, which is such a smart way to go with it and yeah, a brilliant way to just close off this teaser. As for my thoughts on the movie, you know, I'm pretty excited. I, I was always someone who preferred the darker movies with DC, and whether it was V for Vendetta, Watchmen, the Nolan trilogy, or the recent Batman, that's kind of where my sensibilities lie. Joker was another one as well, and I thought it was a shame that DC kept trying to make their DCEU to be Marvel light when all their big box office successes were leaning in with that darker side. So I'm glad they're following it up with this, and that original was something I really wanted to see expanded upon. I know there's a camera thing, it should have just been a one and done, but I love the direction they took, and, and by far, it's the best comic book villain origin story. Looking at you, Sony, there was of course Oscars getting handed out for it as well, and with that billion dollar gross, you know, you can tell why Warner Brothers were like, we'll have to do another one. Now, I was originally hoping this was going to connect to the Matt Reeves stuff, but now we know that isn't going to be the case. I'm still interested to see where it goes though, and with it being an Elseworlds story, it's not really restricted to have to fit in with other universes. So that to me is what's going to allow them to just go wild with it, and it's a big opportunity to just do lots of crazy things. I've heard good things about the movie too, and yeah, can't wait to see it when it releases later in the air. Now obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts, so make sure you drop them in the comments below. Please hit a thumbs up, and if you want to support the channel as a member of the Spoiler Society, then please click the join button. You'll get early access to lots of videos every week. We try and do three a week at least. Um, some are audio versions before we edited them, but there's lots of early content for members and it's just 99 cents a month or works out less than $12 a year. So it's great value and we appreciate everyone who's signed up to it and hopefully the ones that have, you've been enjoying the content so far. Now if you want something else to watch, we've got a breakdown on screen right now where we talk about the finale of Invincible Season 2. Lots of things going on there, there's lots of directions that could go, and yeah, definitely head over there right after this. By the way, huge thank you for sticking through the video. I've been your host, Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.